south of February. It's been nine months in the coming. And here we are, the day we're leaving. It's a bright, sunny day. We've got about a seven and a half hour drive. Get set up with camp in the tent tonight. Tomorrow morning, we will be in a tree stand. Not the best weather for tomorrow. Second week in November, it's gonna be 70 degrees tomorrow, but then a cold front comes in Thursday night and the rest of the time that we're hunting, weather's gonna be cold. Cannot wait to get out there and hunt. Look forward to an awesome experience. cover shot but we did we got it all in seven and a half hours we're on the road brother yes we Time are to go. yes we are Sleep, was it? Yeah. Oh, 30 minutes for me. 35. In an hour other than the coyotes. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, that was pretty fucking cool. When I heard in the back of my neck stood up, I was like, oh. Yeah. There's quite a few of them out there singing for yeah, us. Yeah, there's actually two groups. Is is a propane on? It is now. Electric start? Uh, yeah, yes, it's, it's from there. Ooh. Am I doing something? Else? Thank you. So, Blake and I are here in Ohio. Got about two hours of sleep last night. Uh, got up this morning, got some coffee, got some breakfast, got on the road. Uh, we're at the place that we're going to go hunting this morning. There's uh, one vehicle here already, but there's a lot of wood. So, we're both getting our stuff together to head out. Kind of going in blind on trees here this morning. Uh, probably going to wait until it gets a little bit light before we hop up in a tree. Uh, but we're going to get out and hunt for three hours or so, uh, do a little scouting, and then meet back at the truck at 12.30. So. Well, I'm finally settled in my tree first morning in Ohio. I never got to where I wanted to get to this morning because I had two headlamps coming at me a couple hundred yards away. So I pulled back and sat at a place that I had marked earlier this summer and uh not sure I'm in the right tree, but it's tough to set a blind in the dark. Uh, I'm sure as we go through the weekend hunting, we'll be able to set up uh, our stands in the afternoon, sit in the evening and the morning, and uh, should make life a lot easier. Well, Blake and I, after going out this morning, came back and had some lunch, um, took a little nap. Uh, this morning, we both kind of went in blind and set up. Uh, Blake had a little bit difficult time getting in. Um, I got in all right. 
and uh, didn't see any deer in stand, but did see really nice eight point just after getting out of my stand. Uh, figures that into my camera. So we're going to another place today, which is a series of ridges and saddles. Uh, we're gonna get our stand set up tonight and um, we're gonna leave them out overnight so that when we come in the morning, it's just a matter of carrying our bows and our clothes and, and camera gear. Still pulling my bow up. Still trying to get stuff situated in the stand. And a doe comes sprinting down the hill behind me and across the creek. Comes sprinting up 15 yards away from me, looking behind her. She caught wind to me because it was swirling. She puffed and took off running up the hill. It was about 20 minutes sitting there and I kept hearing some light grunts. So I looked behind me and across the creek coming down the slope there was a nice eight point. And he came about 70 yards away and then paralleled the ridge and we went a couple times and he stopped and turned around and looked. But he was on a mission so he just kept trotting away. But it's kind of cool, you know, 20 minutes on the stand tonight. Had a doe underneath me and a nice eight point, 70 yards away. See the rest of that evening unfolds. That was a uh, that was a long day. Yes, it was. We got in here, all our shits dry. Ate dinner, showered. Now it's pouring rain, and the raindrops gonna help us go to sleep. Yes, Nighty night, bunny rabbit. Nighty night, bunny. Morning guys. Yesterday was kind of a mixed bag. Uh, Blake had a rough day trying to get in a stand in the morning in the in the dark blind and got up and there was a tree branch in front of him and had a bunch of turkeys roosted around him in the morning. Blake went to get into his stand last night. No sooner than he get ready to drop his backpack and look up the tree and some hunter about 80 yards whistled. So he had to move and find another spot, but Blake's ready to have a better day. <laughs> you need it. We, uh, we're on our way. It's like 37 degrees this morning from 70 yesterday. A nice cold front came through. Uh, we're both kind of sitting on the north slope of a hill with some south southwest winds. Uh, so we're excited to get out today. I'm feeling it, man. Hell yeah. I'm going to get a deer this morning. Yeah, brother. Okay, buddy. Good luck, man. You got your bow already? Huh? Get your bow? Uh-uh. I'm going to grab all this stuff. That'd be funny, huh? Uh, we've all been in a situation where you get out there and you forgot something important, but Bo would really suck. Yeah. Okay, Bubba. All right, man. Kick ass, you bet. I can't wait to get text message. Buddy. Beautiful morning, nice chilly temperatures, plenty of woodpeckers, plenty of blue jays, plenty of squirrels, no deer. Absolutely beautiful view. We're in state forests in Ohio that are totally and completely woods, mountains, valleys. 
Just walked about three miles today trying to find a, some fresh sign. Found one scrape and rub line. So we got a tree stand set up on that. It's about seven tenths of a mile away from the truck. I'm gonna leave the sticks and stand here overnight. Just pack out clothes and bow. Come here tomorrow, sit all day long or as long as we can with the rainstorm coming in. And uh, then pack out the sticks and stand tomorrow night. And uh, Ohio will be done. So got another about 24 hours to see if we can hook up with the deer. If not, it's a great experience. Um, learned a ton. Uh, definitely understand that uh, it's not easy, to say the least. buck right there. He's like, you sons of bitches are in my way. Dude, look at that. Did you get it? Yeah. Oh my god, it's got an arrow stuck in it. So the last day in Ohio was pretty much a wash for Blake and I. Uh, there was a huge storm forecast to come in mid-morning, 100% chance of rain with like 38 to 40 degree temperatures. Uh, Blake and I that morning were both planning to walk into a place we'd set up a stand the night before that was probably an eight-tenths of a mile walk in. I didn't end up taking my camera gear with me and I got up in there early enough in the morning. I kicked a buck up on the way up in, um, got sat down, I uh, figure first two and a half hours it didn't rain. I could have brought the camera, but I didn't know that based on the forecast. About 9.45, I had a doe walk past me about 45 yards away, and then maybe about 15 minutes later, a decent eight point came up and followed the exact trail she was on. Um, I tried to grunt and get him to come in, but his nose was to the ground and he was following her. Uh, 40, 45 yards away through thick brush. I wouldn't have had a shot with my bow, but if I would have had my crossbow, I might have had an opportunity if I could get him stopped. Maybe about 10, 10, 30, I decided to start packing up. I could still see on my forecast because I could get service that the rain was coming in. I got my uh, hang on stand down and my sticks down and got everything packed up and 
got to within about five minutes of my truck and it started pouring. I got stuff put in the truck and drove over and uh, picked up Blake where he was hunting. We started talking about what we thought our plan was for the day and I suggested maybe we should call it quits and get out of there. And Blake said, hey man, we put all this time and effort into this. I don't wanna go, um, let's hunt this afternoon and then we can decide what to do. So at camp, Blake packed up his personal belongings and I ended up taking him back to where we hunted the first day and saw, saw a lot of good sign. Uh, dropped him off and uh, he got set up in a place that he wanted to sit. I went back to camp and pretty much got everything cleaned up pouring rain, absolutely soaked, uh, but the forecast wasn't good until like 10 the next day, so I knew it was probably a good idea to get on the road. Uh, it was wet snow and our tent was starting to cave in, so it was time to get out of there. I got done with about two hours left before light ended, and uh, I decided that I was gonna go out and find a place to sit. Uh, I threw on a rain jacket, light pair of gloves, baseball hat, and uh, I went out with my bow and my release, and that was it. Um, I did take my phone in a Ziploc bag, but no way I could take my camera or anything else because it was just absolutely pouring. Uh, I looked on Onyx and found a place that was a farmer's field and a south-facing slope and a nice set of pines that went up to a point, and then over the top of that point was hardwoods and like a bowl. I walked up this point about 200 yards and found an old metal ladder stand. Uh, I'm like, hour and a half left, nobody's gonna sit here. So I hopped up in the stand and sat down without any expectations and about 20 minutes later, I heard a doe huff out in the woods and she blew and I knew it wasn't me because my wind wasn't going that way and about 20 seconds later, off to my right, I see this doe sprinting up that hardwood bowl with an eight point, nice two and a half year old eight point right behind her. They got about even with me and took a hard right and disappeared into some thick stuff about 120 yards away. And as I'm watching them disappear, I see something off to my right and look down and there's this mule of a buck that's following up on the same path. I mean, he couldn't even keep up. 140 yards away, I could tell how big the antlers were. He got up to the point where they had turned and went into that thick stuff and no sooner did he get there, but she came running out past him coming right at me. That eight point was right up her tail and the two of them crossed over the point about 40 yards above me. As soon as they crossed over the point, they took a hard left and went immediately behind me. And I'm watching them and I'm watching him at the same time and I see him coming. And as soon as he saw them turn behind me, he changed his course. And instead of following where they were 40 yards away, he came 10 yards right underneath my stand at a dead sprint. I stood up, got my release on, pulled back and I froze. He was so big, it happened so fast, I didn't, I should have screamed, I should have yelled, I didn't have a grunt call, I should have done something to get him to stop. And I was just in such awe that I didn't do anything. He went past me and down into the pines and as I watch him disappear, I can hear him breaking branches off with his antlers as he's running through the woods. About 20 seconds went by and my adrenaline popped and I just started shaking, I just, for the next 10 minutes, just sat there replaying it in my mind, what I could have done differently and how fast it happened. I hopped out of the tree, went back to the truck and um, just huge smile on my face, knowing I'd be back to Ohio again for sure. Changed my clothes, put my bow away, uh, went and picked up Blake and um, it was a good half hour in the vehicle before I could tell him the story. And he listened to the story and he couldn't believe it. And I told him, I said, buddy, it's two and a half times bigger than any deer I've ever seen in my life. You know, like 12 points, big kicker on the left-hind side, huge seven, eight inch brow tines. So the next day I got online and I started looking at Google images and I found a picture of a buck that looked identical to him. And I sent it to Blake and Blake just couldn't believe it. I mean, he just went, holy shit. <laughs> so, it was a great last day, you know. I saw five buck, I saw two doe. I know we got into some more deer, which gave us some confidence that we could find them. So Blake and I are really excited to have the opportunity to get back to Ohio. Uh, we learned a ton, things we did right, things we did wrong. Uh, but I definitely think this next time we're in Ohio, we're gonna put ourselves in a situation in which we're gonna have a much better opportunity uh, to be successful in harvest a buck.